behind us could not be any more Glasgow. I'm going to take you on a tour today. My name is Gary. I used to be president of Queen Margaret Union and I now run the Celtic Ginger Scotland tours. I work very closely with the university and I'm aiming to work even closer with Queen Margaret Union moving forward. We're going to go on a walk through Glasgow's history, through some stories, some myths and some legends. Come with us and I hope you enjoy it. George Square is the centrepiece of modern Glasgow and old Glasgow, but these days it's a place where people come to eat lunch, to mix, get off the bus and start their journey through the city. Behind us is the city chambers. It's essentially Glasgow's version of a town hall. All the other buildings around here have different purposes throughout history, but from the train station across the road to the bars and cafes, this is still a hub of activity. Glasgow has a patron saint called Saint Mungo and when Catholicism came to the UK and started to spread all across the country, Saint Mungo became the, the person who would spread it most around the west and central Scotland. And the patron saint Saint Mungo is quite firmly associated with here, Glasgow Cathedral. Saint Mungo is famously known in Glasgow for his miracles. Four famous miracles include one about a bird, one about a tree, one about a bell and one about a fish. The most famous of these is the one involving the fish. There was a king and a queen of a region known as Strathclyde. There's also another university in Glasgow by that name. And the king and the queen, according to the tourist version of the tale, which I'll tell you, weren't having the greatest time. And the king had ordered a kind of handmade ring for his wife. And he gave it to her. And as I said, they weren't getting on very well. She was uh, friendly, let's just say, with the king's best friend and loyal knight. And he ended up with the ring. The king noticed this and then decided that he was going to try and entrap his wife and the knight by asking for the ring to be displayed. The queen obviously said, I have the ring, I'll get it for you. But the knight, in a bit of a fit of panic, had thrown it into the river. And so there was no way they were going to be able to get it. And as the queen and the knight were arguing over what was going to happen to them, conveniently at that moment, Saint Mungo himself came strolling on by and solved the problem by finding the ring inside a fish. Some say a trout, some say a salmon, I'm team salmon. And inside was the ring, which they then took back, showed to the king, and everybody relatively lived happily ever after, potentially with the exception of the king. St. Mungo would eventually come to Glasgow. One of his mentors sadly died and left instructions to be laid out in a cart and wherever the bulls that were tied to the cart decided to rest, he should just, like, bury him there and start a city. At least that's how the legend goes in Glasgow. And the bulls decided to stop here on this famous mighty river, which sadly no longer exists, called the Mall and Diner. It's now under the road, guys. Um, it used to run under the bridge here and it's uh, converted into a pipe under the ground. So this is essentially where Glasgow started. He came here, the original tomb has been built up in different places over the years to become the cathedral, and St Mungo founded Glasgow, at least according to the tourist version. St Mungo had a second miracle, not quite as exciting, involving a bell that was given to him from the Pope, and that is the miracle. Doesn't seem very miraculous, so in Glasgow we have the tourist version of the tale, as always, where we like to turn it into some sort of dad joke. And the idea basically is that Mungo knew that getting the bell was impossible, because everybody knew that although he was the Pope, the Pope liked to make play tricks on everybody. Do you want my bell? It's amazing, it's my bell, but it's my bell, you can't have the bell. And then one day, Mungo was walking down the street and said, do you want to see this, guys? Brandished the bell, and everyone was like, where'd you get that? And he went, it's a miracle. Next to the graveyard, there is a well that has been boarded up and closed called the Lady Well. Glasgow is full of myths and legends. And one of my favorites I was told by a family member a long, long time ago that the Lady Well was closed supposedly officially because a brewery and the graveyard were built next to it and it contaminated the water. But the story that I was told by a family member was that it was all about witches. A witch decided to get back at Glaswegians and poisoned the well with a spell. And two kids ran down and decided to test the curse and see if it was true. One boy took a drink from it and the other one watched and then screamed in fear as the boy who drank suddenly aged by about 12 to 15 years and couldn't return home to his family because they thought he was a strange weirdo and didn't know who he was. And the boy had to leave Glasgow and live in exile. And that's why the Lady Well was closed. This is Glasgow Necropolis. Beautiful graveyard. On a great day, you can see all across the city 
and you get a fantastic view of Glasgow Cathedral where we've been already today. St Mungo, as I told you, had a number of miracles and one of his most famous, but not quite as big and dramatic as the ones I've already told you, focuses on a tree and a bird. When St Mungo was essentially training in his faith, there were other people who were very jealous of what he did and they always tried to catch St Mungo out. And in the tourist version of the story, which again is not the most official version, but is the one that we tell when we're younger and when we've got the tourists in the city. Some of these people were so jealous of Mungo that when he was entrusted to look after a leader's pet bird, when Mungo fell asleep, the bird's neck was broken and it was blamed on Mungo. Mungo decided to confess what had happened and he took the bird in his hands and said, I'm so sorry. And the leader said, what for? And Mungo opened his hands and the bird flew away. Miracle number three, I think, on the count that we're on. For the tree, similar story. There's a fire that Mungo's supposed to look after. Other people are jealous and when he falls asleep, they douse the flames. Probably not the greatest thing to do, dousing a holy fire, but they are out to get St Mungo. Again, Mungo panics, not knowing what to do. And this being Scotland, it's raining so heavily, all the trees and all the wood is soaked, but he's got to try. So he grabs a hold of a tree and it bursts into the flames as if he's a member of the X-Men or the Avengers. Takes it in, starts the fire, miracle number four. The University of Glasgow wasn't always in the West End. It used to be in the city centre off the High Street, near what is now the University of Strathclyde and some of the colleges. It was originally known as Glasgow College. It used to have beautiful hanging gardens, used to have really amazing buildings. And College Lands was where the campus used to be. The city council, and especially the, the, the railway company at the time, wanted that land for the railway expansion. And so they offered the university a, a, a deal that they just couldn't refuse. And so the campus was basically up with most of the stuff that and they moved to Dormitory. And they took with them the Pierce Lodge at the bottom of University Avenue, across from the GUU, and the line in the Unicorn Staircase from Professor Square. Sadly, nothing else from the campus made it to the West End. Glasgow's got an amazing music scene, and Queen Margaret Union's a big, big part of it. Lots of music venues across the city, lots of bands are played here, and in the city centre, there's a small park called Barrowland Park, after a very famous venue in the city, and a list of some of the musical acts, including many that have played Queen Margaret Union, are on the floor here. If you do not spend time in this city at music venues, you have not done Glasgow properly. Queen Margaret Union is really famous for having had some big bands from the 90s play before they were famous, and, and to this day, there's bands playing QM that hopefully in a few years time you will look back fondly at being the only person at that gig when no one else knew who they were. Perhaps the most famous QM legend is that Kurt Cobain from Nirvana stood on a copy of his set list which is framed somewhere in the Union, somewhere in the early 90s before they were big. There's a lot of these in Glasgow. These blue police boxes, which most of you will know as the TARDIS from Doctor Who, are found all across the city historically. These days, there is still a couple of them. A couple in the West End, a couple in the city centre, and this one here, just on the edge. Find them all, guys. That's your challenge. The Merchant City is a gorgeous part of the city. Absolutely stunning. And um, it was thanks to Glasgow's trading history with the empire that was built. So of course, it's not all good history. There. There's, there's a lot of dark history involved in the slave trade and the sugar trade and the tobacco trade. But the, the original plan for that like area and its streets was that each of the, the streets and roads would be closed, almost like a vista. So you would look down one street and you could see the beautiful building of the trades hall, look down another one and you could see Hutchison's hospital. And some of the streets still are closed with, uh, with this vista. The big archway that you see in Glasgow Green is the McLennan Arch. The McLennan Arch has been in a few different locations and it's prominently displayed at the entrance of the Glasgow Green. But it was at one time on Ingram Street and I think one of the locations somewhere in the city. And Jail Square across the road, now known as Jocelyn Square, is where you used to do the hangings because the last thing you would see is the monument. Right. Okay. And it was to remind you that, you know, no matter how bad you were, you were still part of the city. And although that you were dying, you were to remember that you still were Glaswegian. And the last thing they wanted you to see was Glasgow. <laughs> Almost to remind you that although you were dying, like this was city was your home and you'd ruined it. <laughs> the fun center of modern Glasgow, especially for office workers and students, is the Merchant City. If you're living in the West End and you want to visit the city center, you're going to end up here at some point. The Merchant City is beautiful, loads of really hipster cafes, lots of nice bars and restaurants, and amazing architecture. 
The beauty of this part of the city does unfortunately have a dark side. This was built with the money of the merchants and all the merchants at one time or another were involved in the slave trade. Yes, many of them did help end it, but sadly the history was there. In recent years, Glasgow has tried really hard to start embracing the history, but also acknowledging the faults of the past. The University of Glasgow and Glasgow City Council in recent years have done a lot of research into the history of Glasgow and the merchant city and its involvement in the slave trade. After this tour, if any of you are interested, get in touch with Queen Margaret Union via myself and we can give you plenty of resources to look up on it. There's a great book called It Wasn't Us that explores Glasgow's actual involvement in slave trade and there's some walking trails that you can get involved with as well. So the church here, which is now the Glasgow Association for Mental Health, among other things in its history, was originally known as the Whistling Kirk. And the story goes that it was one of the first churches in the whole of the city to get an organ. And when people heard the music coming from it, they had no idea what it was. And they said that the church was whistling. And so they called it the Whistling Kirk. There's actually a bar around the corner, I think sadly closed down um, with the name. So it is still quite common knowledge in this part of Glasgow. This is Glasgow Cross part of the city in the old days, but out of the way these days. What you see here is one of the only pieces left of the original Tontine building that ran the entire block behind us. The archways used to have really cool heads above them. All these faces have been moved up near the cathedral in a place known as, I think, St. Stephen's Garden, I could be wrong, just behind the province lordship, oldest house. Big search went on to try and find all of these. What's really cool about this and a bit morbid is on the other side, there are little rings along the wall where they used to pin people by the ear for the crimes that they'd done. And your choice was you can stay there and get tomatoes, among other minging things, as we say in Glasgow, disgusting things, thrown at you over the time you're there. Or you can rip off your ear and walk to freedom. One thing Glasgow is well known for is its green spaces like Glasgow Green. The name Glasgow, and it's the original Scottish language, Gaelic. It's quite controversial, but some people say that it means green space. And if you do travel across the city, or you look even in simply on Google Maps as you zoom out, you'll see why. Glasgow has over 400 parks and gardens. Most of them are tiny, but 25 of them are massive, including Glasgow Green here, Kelvin Grove Park in the West End, Victoria Park near some of the student halls, Dawson Park, all of them have their own features. Here in Glasgow Green, you've got one of the original spaces of the city. People used to be able to dry their laundry here, used to be able to graze your sheep here. In the West End, you can see some fossilised areas of the city, like fossilised trees. You've got Highland Cows near the vet school. Get out, explore it, you don't have any excuses, guys. Glasgow Botanic Gardens is one of the 25 large parks that Glasgow has and there are glass houses, there are green spaces, there's even the Kibble Palace which houses a, a nice collection of different types of plants and different things inside, they do events here. During this very interesting semester, this park is going to become your home. There are places where you can sit and study on a nice warm day, you can even do a lecture from here if you jump on Zoom. Glasgow has a lot of museums, loads of museums, and um, right now in the middle of a pandemic, they're not all open. But at one time there was 12 free museums in Glasgow, most of them are still used. There's even talk about transforming, hopefully, um, one of them into uh, an empire museum and slavery museum, where, where Glasgow will acknowledge not just its city, but Scotland's role um, in the history there. But there are museums dedicated to um, basic learning for, for early years, all the way through to adults. So you can go see what it was like to be in a school back in the Victorian age. You can go see beautiful art collections, modern art, and um, there's private collections on display. And there's even the Riverside Museum um, just south of the campus near the, 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 where the Kelvin River meets the River Clyde. But the most famous one is Kelvin Grove Museum and Art Gallery. And it's just outside the campus um, on Dumbarton Road. And you will spend hours or days walking around that place. I especially like the dinosaurs. The University of Glasgow's main building, did we talk about that? The Gilbert Scott building. It's a beautiful building. Um, if you come to this campus, you always get kind of enthralled by the beauty of the main campus, the Gilbert Scott building. And one thing that a lot of students enjoy, and a lot of people enjoy, especially in the, the age of you know all these amazing blockbuster movies, that, that like the Harry Potter series and Hogwarts and all these ideas, um, is that the campus is really old, and so it's, it's got this mystical appeal to it. And it is an old university, it's 550 years plus 
old. But that's not this campus. This campus has actually only existed since 1875 or thereabouts, and it was made to look old, medieval. So it's a beautiful campus, um, but it's not as old as you think it is. It's just brilliant architecture, and you should definitely go for a walk around it. Inside you've got the cloisters, you've got the lawns, the quads. Do not stand on the quads until you've graduated. I can do it, you can. Um, and yeah, the walk around, you'll see some stuff that was a capture from the original campus, like the Lion and the Unicorn staircase and uh, Pierce Lodge, and you get a great view of the city from the back of the, of the building.